Oh. 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 Testing one two. I think I heard you, so I should go to Zoom in two seconds. Because okay. oh, you're already closed. They should be going through. I haven't heard it. Here. I'll I'll mm -hmm. I'll open.
listen to it? Testing. Yep. Yeah, and then you can.
everyone. Thank you for coming. So hello, everyone. I will ask you to maybe wait a few minutes, one minute, as we see more people coming in. They're still outside. And then we will begin. Hey, so officially, hello. Thank you all for coming to the beautiful celebration of life for Jose Granda in honor of him. So we are just so happy that we're able to come here and just look forward to his YouTube videos and videos that we have of Jose Granda to remember his, his beautiful life and have memories of him. And that will be ongoing throughout the celebration. Please don't forget to sign in. In the book, in the back of the room, before you leave, please go ahead and sign in and write a message of this day. And we will be giving that to the family as a beautiful memory of today. To remind you of this beautiful artistic shirt of Jose Granda. We will be selling it today. If you fill out the form or if you want to meet, you know, in person and just do it. Um, it's a simple app that you click. There's three colors. You can pick a white t-shirt, navy, and it's really good quality. And all the profits, and there's other another color, but there's all the profits will go to the scholarship of Jose Granda's foundation. It is to support Miami-Dade College students that are in the interpreting training program. So it's really to support the program to continue thriving, to continue going. I know it was Jose Granda's desire to see this sign language program really take off and be strong, see interpreters from beginning to the end, become qualified, become professionals. That was his heart, and this is a way that we can honor that. Hope you all are enjoying enjoying this Sunday here and really coming here together. As you can see, there's a lot of flamingos because it is Jose's um, favorite um, animal. I even have a pin here of a flamingo and it's all in honor of him. We miss him very much and we miss just his friendly and his personality that was even shown through this. So thank you so much for the volunteers that came, for the family members that are here and for everyone who helped this set up this program today. Lastly, if you're curious, if you are interested in, in the foundation, there is a QR code that is easily accessible at the in the table. But if you cannot do it through the app or through the website, you can go ahead and donate cash or actually no cash, only check. There's a box in the back that you can deposit there for the foundations. Or if you want to do it through the app, it's easy. We can also do it through email. So I will be sending out more information after this weekend as well through email so you have that accessible to you. And I want to thank Natalie Granda, Jose Granda's niece, for, for the beautiful video of Jose Granda that we will be seeing today. I know that all of you sent in pictures of your uh, memories of Jose Granda, and we were able to do a compilation of that. So it's about an hour or so of all the videos and all the pictures that you all sent of how he spent time with us. So after two o'clock, you will see that the program will show that video. So thank you for joining and thank you for your cooperation.
Hello, everyone. Yes, thank you. Hello, everyone. It's impressive and amazing how everyone is here, and it's, it's so inspirational. I can feel even Jose Grande's spirit as we saw the pictures. I want to thank you so much for everyone who sent pictures and everything that you all send and for sharing all those memories with us. I'm honestly very proud of celebrating him. And he's here watching us today in spirit. I feel it. it there's something in me that is actually, I can sense that his spirit is here with us. So I think it's just a beautiful, inspirational time that we've been able to, yes, I know it does get emotional, as we see and we talk and we chat and we meet all the friends that came from out of state, out of, out of the city and flew in to celebrate Jose Granda. And I know Nancy Rourke, the deaf artist, she came all the way from Colorado and, and thank you so much. I just want to take my hat off to her and honor her for coming today and honoring Jose Granda. Dr. Davis, the former president, is here, and it was just shocking to see that David, the the doctor, Dr. David, thank you so much. The former role model has come here today to honor Jose Granda as well. So thank you to you too. And I can't name everyone who I want to thank at this moment and who have come out of town and out of state, but we do know that someone here came from New York, Michelle. Michelle Sorayan, thank you um, for two weeks, was here and then came back. So thank you so much. Michelle, where are you? I want to publicly thank you for coming. And another person who came from out of, out of town, from Ocala, and everyone who came and flew in, please raise your hand. How many of you came from Orlando, from Ocala, just from different cities out of Miami? Raise your hand. Stand up if you may. From Palm Coast. Where are you from? Okay, from Orlando. Where are you coming from? Clearwater. From Clearwater. Anyone else? Tell me where you're from. Where did you come from? Lakeland. Lakeland, wow. My I need to maybe change my glasses. I can't see that far. St. Pete. Lakeland as well. Well, there's many from Lakeland. Ocala, I see. Julie Sherman, thank you for coming. From Ocala, she drove all the way over here. 
So I see some from West Palm Beach as well. Very grateful. I know you all came from long distances, but like I said, his spirit is here and I know he's smiling on this day. I know that he's shining, seeing how we have come here to celebrate. I know it was hard to come. Some of you are working and I know that some have worked hard to make this celebration possible like Carolina where's Carolina thank you so much Carolina we've worked as a team today to really make this happen just an amazing effort we shared the effort in making this happen also Daniela was an assistant and helping so I want to mention her today and the president of Miami-Dade College Bernine Vasquez and Dr. Venezuela, and the third, Dr. Lopez. Thank you to you three for hosting us here and for celebrating, and my former boss, my boss, thank you over there, Catherine. And I also wanna thank I wish Jose Granto was here. He would remind me of everyone's names. He would quickly say, you're getting it wrong. Spell it right. Say this. So I'm embarrassed that at this time, the name has slipped my mind. But yes, perfect. Pete. And I'm sorry. I know there's many names I'm trying to keep in mind at this moment just to say the thanks to everyone. So Pete. And I, Jose Granto gave him this sign name. Give it my boss is my name. So Pete, thank you. Ellen, Ellen Pete. So thank you so much for being here to celebrate his life. And without further ado, I wanna honor Jose, the president of the college to come up so he can celebrate. And I wanna thank him before he comes up to thank him for all the food that was provided, the catering, just... And welcome president What's it? Foreman Gascas. Fermin Vasquez. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Javian, for that warm welcome to the stage. I couldn't but think as uh, I was driving en route to campus today, just the impact that Professor Granda has had on this campus. Um, but before I start just naming the few things that I'm aware of and the great things I know all of you have been able to witness either in the community, in your homes, or in the classroom, I want to take a moment to thank the committee. Um, I, I, that moment that I was told of this horrible accident that had happened to Professor Grand, I couldn't believe it. Um, but we're here to celebrate his life. So um, on behalf of Miami-Dade College North Campus, um, I want to thank, uh, the once again, the committee, public safety, campus services. But I know one special person that's been working extremely hard from our academic affairs division to make sure that everything was flawless today is Daniela Fernandez Criado. If you could please stand so everybody could see you. Where's Daniela? There she is, making sure that everything is working well uh, from behind the booth. So, but coming back to Professor Granda, I got I got to meet uh, once virtually and now in person, um, the sister of Professor Jose Granda, his brother, I met Eddie for the first time. I got to tell you that from Miami-Dade College's perspective, we all we always saw the commitment that he had not only to his students, but to the program to the importance that ASL was to be able to learn appropriately, to be able to represent in the community what it meant to be an ASL graduate from Miami-Dade College, to make sure that his students were prepared regardless of their background or their knowledge of the ASL language, or really the interest that they may have but he made sure that they knew the importance of what this meant for so many. 
you know, along the way, I've read article after article. I've heard different testimonials from different people of what he meant to be in this community. And it's surprising the impact that one individual could have to so many. To hear Professor Jabian, I am not going to be able to name names like he is, by the way. He was much better at that than I would be. Uh, but to think of the folks that came from all different cities, counties, even states, to be here to recognize his life means the world. Because it means that his impact was way beyond just Miami. His life, his joy, just the energy that he had surrounding him was everlasting. He would not stop to advocate for what it meant to be a professor in a classroom, what it meant to be a student in his classroom, the needs of the program, and making sure that the chairs that support him always find a way to find resources, to find support, and to make sure that even though it was a small program, it was the highlight of our programs here at North Campus. I gotta say that, you know, this was definitely a way, a home away from home for him. And we felt it like that. Um, I was just mentioning to his sister a week before the incident, he had come to one of our faculty meetings. I have a monthly meeting that I invite um, our faculty members, either something like a pastelitos with the president or pizza with the president, some fun event to engage with faculty and see how things are going in the classroom. I felt that this was an important initiative coming out of the pandemic. So many students had veered away to virtual learning. And I thought that as they acclimated back into the classroom, it was important that we provided support to our faculty. But I invite everyone, and rarely do I get a adjunct faculty member participate. And we weren't ready that day for his participation, but I knew how important it was. And regardless the challenges that we had communicating, he made it a point to me to tell me, don't forget us. Don't forget the needs in the classroom. Don't forget our students. And he gave me a laundry list that I've shared some of the things with Professor Jabian uh, for, for me to follow. So my commitment to the program and to the students of Miami-Dade College and to the memory of Jose Granda is that those things will be accomplished in my presidency here at the North Campus. So as I continue, I don't want to take more time because I know there's a lot more stories out there. I want to say that thank you for being here. Thank you for acknowledging the life and celebrating with us together, Jose Granda because beyond that classroom, he was so much more and impacted so many lives. And I'm blessed to be able to host this for all of you. So thank you and have a great afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Vasquez, for your presentation and for speaking about Jose Granda. Now, Mr. Fernandez Lopez, who was the overseer of the Miami Dade College Interpreting Program and also the Communications Department, I want to welcome him at this moment to the stage. Good afternoon. My name is Fernando Lopez, and I had the honor and still have the honor of being the chair of the English and Communications Department here at Miami-Dade College. And my department includes not only the English department, the communications or speech language department, but including the sign language interpretation program. I have had the honor of having the SLI program within our department for the last year, but I really wanted to share a little more about my experiences with Professor Granda. You see, my story with Jose goes back a little over 30 years ago. 
Jose and I actually uh, first met when I was in college and I was working at the Florida Relay Service. I was uh, the communication assistant CA 9097M. And I will always remember the amount of fun that I had working at the Florida Relay Service. And at that time, Jose served as our communication specialist supervisor. And at that time, I was in the middle of graduating college, getting ready to get married. And I thought that my life was just full of stress. And I remembered Jose uh, pulled me to the side and basically uh, shared with me in a much colorful way, but because we're in mixed company, I won't share the exact words that Jose shared with me. But he basically said the fact that um, any obstacles, any challenges in life that you have right now, focus on the good things that can come out of them and don't focus on the bad. You're too young to even know what bad experiences are. The only type of suffering you've experienced is probably spankings from your mother, and that's about it. Uh, you don't know, you're too young to know what suffering is like. Focus on the positive. Always have that smile. Don't allow other people to know that you are dealing with any types of challenges because in the end, you will overcome if you stay focused to what is true. That stayed in my heart with uh, for many, many years. and. 25 years later, we run into one another back here at Miami-Dade College. And I was so shocked and surprised at the same time uh, to meet up with him again. And the first thing he looked at me, I asked him, um, do I look like I have suffered enough? Can I now complain about my suffering? And he said, so as long as it's not just your wife who's been thanking you, yes, you can complain all you'd like. He was an amazing individual. He was an advocate, not only for his students, but he was an advocate for all that he found passion. He was a passionate individual. Uh, he was very honest. He was probably one of the funniest individuals who did not uh, ever hide what he felt. I remember one of the last interactions we had together, he met my son for the first time and he waited for my son to step out of the office and he said, was your son adopted? And I said, yes, we adopted my son four years ago. And he said, oh, thank God, because I didn't have the heart to tell you that that's not your kid because he's too good looking to be yours. So I am just so thankful that our relationship had stayed the same throughout those 30 years. And this is an individual who I will always remember for the positivity that he shared with me, the encouragement that he has given me, and more importantly, what he passed down to my son. Uh, he looked at my son, and he told him that this was me and daddy. His daddy and I were friends. And that's the one sign that my son still remembers. And it, it brought a lot of pain to know that such a light was taken out. But you know, the truth of the matter is the clouds have been a lot brighter. And we know that he's always gonna be near and dear to our hearts. And those rainbows will be just a little brighter and shinier because he's where he is. Thank you very much for your time. Wow, thank you so much, Mr. Fernand Lopez. This beautiful story about uh, Jose, because we've known each other for so long. It's such a small world. Can you imagine that for him so long? And now meeting again is like, wow, incredible. So next will be Jose's brother, Pedro. Eduardo. Eduardo will be presenting. Welcome to the stage. Well, I have notes, but I don't think I need them. Basically, I think I'm going to say what everybody else says. But first of all, I want to say I'm I'm extremely touched uh, by the outpouring of love and support that I've seen and I've seen and felt from everybody since his passing. Unfortunately, it took that to sort of see a uh, or really dive into a new side of my brother that that I uh, you know I hadn't known to the extent that that I know so. I want to say, you know, I'm touched by it. Um, and I also want to thank everyone who, you know, who put this together for the celebration of his life. So, 
you know, I, just like uh, Sister Maria and I, I think we're still processing things in, in kind of a kind of a way because we're kind of like grieving and uncovering at the same time. So, you know, this makes us and I don't want to speak for Maria and I don't want to steal her thunder, but um, but I think she shares a lot of the things that I feel. So, um, again, thank you so much. And I'm going to share some some things and just kind of timing because. Uh, Maria and I were both recently interviewed by uh, Juan Gomez of uh, of the NBC uh, paper, and and you know we were asked to describe him. So I want to share something with you, and I think most of you're going to know what this is, most of these things. But I want to share what, what how I he asked me how to describe Jose, um, Professor Granda to some of you. I'm looking at you, Anika, um, in particular. Uh, so, uh, no, I, I wanted to say, you know, just so, some of the adjectives that, that I described to him. So Jose was, you know, again, you all know, it's very warm, uh, you know, just it, from incredible hugs and making you feel special every time you were around him, like you were the, you were the, the, the center of his world for that moment. And, you know, that, that to me is very touching. And as I've gotten to know, uh, unfortunately, posthumously, he he made everybody feel that way, and that's great. I mean, like, um, I, how he found that energy is still beyond me. Um, also, you know, uh, very happy and fun loving. Uh, always find a way to to you know. Part of it is blunt honesty, but the way uh this gentleman before said you know how that couldn't that couldn't be your son well i would i would say it's so on brand for jose to say something like that um and 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 i wrote down my notes happy and fun loving and i'm looking at my daughter now to to say that uh how he used to enjoy making fun of her when she was a small child uh even back then being conscious of how her, how she looked and you know would always do that Oh, I have to look pretty and all this for for whatever. So yes, I'm embarrassing you, Natalie. Enjoy it. Um, I also wanted to say again these things you know, but he's very deliberate and thoughtful. Um, you know, he you know I'm I'm more the you know give you a target gift card kind of guy because I just uh, I'm not that's not me. But but Jose was you know every gift was tailored to meet the person whatever they liked you know. And I can tell you you know with my kids or whatnot with Carolyn it was the gifts would have been tailored to swimming with what the passion that they shared, you know, with Natalie may have been something to do with piano back in the day with David, it would have been my son, David, it would have been uh, something geared towards baseball. It was, uh, there was never anything cookie cutter about, about uh, Jose or Pepito, as I still refer to him sometimes. And, you know, along those lines, he was very, you know, passionate about everything that he gave um and so kind of like from magic from an adjective perspective i'd say he was very independent and again i think you all know that uh, uh you know such such an amazing person and the gentleman before talked about challenge as well you know i think it goes to say that that uh, jose was a fighter uh in, in in everything and and i was always amazed at um you know how he never let his disability impede him from traveling exploring the world making a difference like he did and i'm and i'm i'm gonna call out uh, maria on this one uh because uh, she shared a story at the at the social back in december 16th and you know talking about i'm sorry i'm stealing your thunder Marty. sorry but it's just so good that um, I wanted to share that I heard people that are here from Lakeland. So I work in actually in in, in Polk County myself, which is where Lakeland is at. Um, and so I think all of Polk County knows, and I, I'm sorry if I'm doing it correctly, what pooping means, but um, uh, sorry. So thanks. I'm stealing Marty Thunder by saying that, that, uh, that he was glad he, he wasn't, that he was hearing impaired because he didn't have to hear all the, pooping that uh was going on around him and of course picky on my own cuban brethren um for all the cubans here uh us cubans we we do talk a lot of poop uh so uh i guess that, that you know every you know there's always a perspective in how you look at things and uh and definitely the way he looked at things was was definitely very positive um and you know i just want to close out with some some fond memories as this reporter asked me so you know, uh, again, I think I think Mari Maria will say the same thing. Basically, every visit, every occasion that he visited with us was special. So it's hard to pick on one thing, even though I'll I'll mention something shortly. 
um that you know every visit was special and he made you feel special and like again the center the center of the universe um for me personally when he moved down to miami he lived with me for a few months so i got to have the joy of being with him on a daily basis and that was you know so touching and again it's just the same person that he was so amazing so joyous to be around again selfishly speaking uh to be there being there at my wedding and being my best man to have my big bro there i mean i i don't know what to say um you know that's special and you know such a touching part of, of my life for him to be there and again you always think of you know the having the disability did he never let that it never let him impede into anything and, and and going further in life and see the the effect that he had on so many people um but the most recent memory and i, I mentioned this to to um annette uh i think the most recent really like memory that touched my heart is um he had been after me to watch the movie coda uh for a while and as you know uh persistence is another adjective i could use for my brother uh, and he was like coda 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 so one day he's visiting and um uh, my daughter my both my daughters my wife just happened not to be there at that moment i think they were helping one of my daughters uh, get moved into Iowa and settling there. But anyway, so I broke down, subscribed to Apple Plus and watched Coda, you know, kind of like, you know, oh God, you know, whatever, what am I going to watch here? I knew we'd been, you know, my daughter and I in particular are into Academy Awards and all the other fun stuff. I was like, it's going to be a good movie, but you know, pretty much what I'm going to know. But I mean, that, that moment is probably like the, like the, the most recent, like heartfelt moment that I, that I, that I had and you know I was telling Annette you know how obviously she could share some of those experiences you know to to know you know to you know as Annette called me now I'm gonna I, now I'm have a nickname new nickname called Soda so thank you Annette um as much as I love acronyms um so you know that was such a touchy moment for me to 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 see that to see the joy in him uh, and and to really understand, you know, even though I had seen Children of a Lesser God, but many years ago, um, for those of us old enough to know what that means, uh, Coda was modern and I guess a little more hip and, and more into today. And and just that that is such a, you know, such a special memory for me that it'll always, you know, will be in my heart and, you know, and, you know, to, to understand the things that he went through and, and, and you know, to, to see that how that applies in the daily life and the challenges. And yet, just like, just like, even though there were characters in a the movie, they're, they, they're just as amazing, uh, you know, well, not as amazing as Jose, my brother, but, you know, that, that really kind of crystallized things for me. And so, I mean, again, I just want to reiterate, you know, my, my gratitude for everybody showing up here, especially those of you that flew in from, many parts uh you know taking time out of your life to to honor him and and uh you know to be in this special day so you know i thank you um and you know god bless you all and i can only end it again with thank you and much love to you all Thank you, Eduardo. Thank you for sharing the beautiful stories and the beautiful memories. I know it's heartbreaking at the same time, but thank you so much. And now I want to introduce John Paul Jebian, longtime and dear friend who have fought together, who have done life together and have worked together with Jose Granta. Hey, I don't need the microphone, so. Ooh, wow. Well, you all know my name is John Paul Jebby, and hello. Jose told me a lot of stories about his life. There's a biography and everything. So a lot of it's about him. This is from him. This is about the hat. The I gave him two of them, you know. And he'd wear them and everybody could see him. So I wanted to bring this here. And Carolina has a story with that. So anyway. Oh, 
the pink flamingos on the tables and he loved them. It was his, this is him in spirit. Wow. It's just amazing how much he loved them. The hats, the Christmas hats, everything is all goes hand in hand with him. Just much respect to show him this special celebration of life. And I've known Jose for 33 years. It was impossible not, not to feel. It was like 33 years when I calculated it. It was amazing. And I first met Jose, and I'll never forget it, honestly, at the Miss Deaf Florida pageant, the crowning. I'd never seen him before. And this, he was an MC there. And I was just sitting there with my good friend there at the table, who was the, one of the contestants. I was just watching. He's like, as he put the crown, I was like, what are you doing? I was like, that's Jose signing. That's him. I'll never forget it. Doing while he was master of ceremonies, it's, it's like, wow, the presentations you have, your demeanor, everything was a crazy. And we just became friends ever since that. And Miami Dade College, Kindle campus, not here, not on North Campus, at the Kindle campus. We had nonprofit class there, and some of the interpreters were there and they were taking classes. And then we moved up here and transitioned here. And, and we were here ever since. It's, it's amazing. It's shocking to see how much has progressed since then. He's like the grandfather of the ASL program here. He, he was the best and has just developed. And I mean, he beat me because we compete. See, hey, how many years you've been here? 20 years, 24 years, 23 years. And now I'm at 27 years, 27 and a half. And he still beat me. So hats off to him. Also, at DSB. Do you know what DSB is? Do you remember Deaf Services Bureau? Of course, it's been shut down now. And he worked on the HIV and AIDS tutoring and information, educational sex education for kids and the adults, just the reading program association, working with them and helping and just giving back to the community to improve the community. And just he tell me all these things that he was doing. I was learning from him and fighting for fighting for deaf rights and for them to be able to learn. And just the, it was a crazy, the, the injections, the IVs for the progression of AIDS, he would inspire me. And Vega, me, uh, and all these other professors, we got to together and volunteer at Miami Dade North Campus for evaluations. Could you imagine on a Friday at three in the afternoon until 10, 11 o'clock at night here doing evaluations? But we did it. So you should pay me. He's like, well, we don't have any money to pay you. So I was like, fine, okay, because we love the students. We didn't care about the money. We just needed that. So we all volunteered and took turns. It was a lot of work coming here. And was, a lot of people are nervous with Jose. So, like, okay, go ahead. Let me just sit here. Then they'd relax. And then we'd switch out. And then they get nervous with Jose again. It's like, hey, sorry, you got to work with him too. And so then he would be critiquing them. It's like, don't worry, you're going to pass. And they'd be bawling their eyes out in there. But he scared them. Okay. But he was very expressive in his signing, his classifiers, and you must check off the list on all these things. And I was a little more flexible, but he was very stringent with that. So, so okay, pass fail kind of worked with that. Morning at 7 a.m., Without missing a beat, he would call me, get his, I'd get my coffee. He's like, hey, what are you doing? We just talk about the news, all everything that was going on. It's like, how do you know everything that's going on? I'm so behind with everything. So he'd catch me up on everything that was going on every morning at seven o'clock. And we fought here for the improvement of access for the fire alarm system, the lights, the emergency system. And the president at the time fixed all that. And we really appreciate that to be more safe and inclusive campus. He, Jose never gave up. He fought for improvement for the video phone system in the labs. He fought for, they told me that like three times he called Sorensen and says, hey, we need to resolve this. And he would put the names down, John Paul, Vega, Jose, the three of us, we do these video calls and fix this. But it was soon after. 
And then after we got that all resolved and then he was gone already, but we got this, all these things resolved and fixed before he left our world. And you know, Jose was very involved in the Miami-Dade Council Board Commission. He's Cody, Commissioner of Disabilities. And wanting to be successful. And now that students here at Miami-Dade College, there's so many of you that have become successful interpreters under his tutelage and everything. And it's amazing to see you all here. And you would tell me about the students that are here that graduated and then already up in the White House interpreting for President Obama and things like that in different positions. It's like he knew all these different interpreters from way back then. And some have been... It's very successful, and it's amazing, the program here that he was working in. And he encouraged people, hey, when you graduate here, go to Gallaudet University, learn. And then when you come back, you just have the signing proficiency. It was amazing. I mean, congratulations, Jose, I, for encouraging the students. I mean, they were nervous to go out and be on their own and be successful. When they come back, it's like, oh, I loved Gaida. I loved USF. I loved all these things, these places up in Tapa. And it was fantastic. He always had a positive attitude to encourage the ongoing education. And he was a role model for the deaf community, really. It was impressive. I, he would tell me all these things. I had really learned from him. And now I am taking on part of that responsibility of myself and Vega here. And really honoring him and his strong presence to just go ahead. And I encourage you to just be positive and go for it. One thing is that he refused to allow talking, especially at Starbucks. It was voice off Voice off, voice off, voice off. If he caught you talking, that was it. Voice off. That was his thing. If you're going to practice, you go to Starbucks for the deaf social, you got to turn your voice off. Hey, hey, you got to turn your voice off. Jose's here. Things like that. So you have to turn your voice off because that is deaf culture. That's the deaf philosophy. His philosophy for improvement is voice off. So in my class, it's like I have voice off. Look, I already have it written out. Oh, I know I'm talking so much, but I'm going to, I got to cut some stuff out here. Oh, whoa. He loved to travel, though. He traveled to so many different states doing sex sign workshops. Did you know that? I mean, the first time he did it, I took a sex sign workshop and I learned so vastly much. I had no ideas. I go, seriously, that's how you sign this stuff? And I took all these notes. He knew everything about the sex signs workshop. It's amazing. It's crazy. So now all the states just loved his presenting of that specific workshop. And everybody was contacting him to go, please come to our state and teach this. It was so inspiring. Firing, and it felt so good to learn this. And I, you know, of course, I know you can't sell sell them all now, but you know, he's gone now. So who's next? Who's going to be teaching that next? You know, maybe an interpreter is going to have to learn all this stuff and do social work for things like that. So it's important if you're in the system that you have to know what type of sexual signs are needed, what are appropriate for formal or informal. But he was really a comedian. He really liked to joke in text. He had such an incredible sense of humor. You all know it. You get messages from him and he just laughs like, are you serious? Why are you sending me this stuff? Come on, stop already. All right, thank you so much, you know, for sending it. But come on, how much time did you have? It was like, you're texting all these people to, uh, I'm number eight or 7.30, eight o'clock, nine o'clock to different people. It's like, how do you contact all these people every day? It's impossible. I can't do it. I'm too busy. But so how do you do it? I mean, even on your video phone, he was, it was immaculate how he could do this. But really what was important was Nancy Rourke. She would tell me about it, certain things. Um, how the, Clayton. with Clayton Valley, the roommate, is amazing collaboration. And Clayton Valley came here and taught in the interpreting program. It was amazing. He had written a book and when there were roommates and he came and taught classes here. And then he passed away. It's very sad. There's so many teachers and professors that have passed away, but have been amazing. Do you all know who Clayton Valley is? 
the book that he wrote was amazing. It's great and honor. I know some of the interpreters that are here, you know, don't like that I have these things on because Jose would say, hey, get that off, that name badge off. It's a distraction. And he's taught me these things about the appropriateness of how interpreters' appearance matter. And I took notes so I could be able to teach that myself. And it's time. Take your nails off. Those distracting nails, take them off. The dangling earrings, take them off. Got to be professional, blaze, basic, black like you're at a funeral. That's it. Simple. Uh, you know, opposing to your skin tone, of course. And one of the big things I really didn't like was the cleavage. He hated that. Hey, cover your cleavage. I don't want to see that. Cover it. So I learned from him. It's like, okay, I have to teach that modesty in class as well. So I really appreciate his teaching and his really, persona. his personal, his persona of, of all this. I mean, I love that he went with RAD, the Rainbow Association of the Deaf. He went to all these different events and his friends and they traveled around to different states like California. And, and our, one time they did have it here in Florida. And he sent me pictures. Of it. it was amazing. Some of the pictures that were actually on the screen you saw earlier doing performances. It was RAD was amazing. The Rainbow Four Association of the Deaf. It, so many people went out and supported it. He didn't hide it. He didn't hide. He was proud to be gay. He was flamboyant enough. He didn't hide. He didn't care. It's like, I'm Cuban. I'm Hispanic. Because it's popular here in Miami, you know, is the best. Everybody looked at him. It's like, oh, they loved it. Everybody come to Miami. They would all fly in here. He's willing to just drive them around, show for them everywhere. My friends are like, hey, would you mind uh, getting Jose? Yeah, sure. I'll go pick him up. And he just drive them around and be a tour guide. So now yesterday, Nancy Rourke flew in. He's like, so what am I going to do? I'm going to have to rent her. I was like, no, 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 Nancy. I'm going to pick you up. I will take that responsibility and drive you around and show for you around. And she was just amazed. You know, unfortunately, so, you know, Jose wasn't here and everything. And so we went to different places that we visited his home and in different places to uh, laid flowers in place of the exact accident. But we went to the beach, but he loved it because of the Cuban coffee, the croquetas. I mean, we got some over there. It's like, oh, they're almost gone. Okay, here, go get them. So, it, man, thank you so much. You know, my he's my brother. Jose was my brother, you know, and like my father, because he taught me so much. I was like his baby. He's teaching me all these things of life and different things. Some of the pain you see that it's crazy. I mean, every day is going to calling me like, look, look at my new painting. Same thing with Nancy. I mean, they would share these things. They'd be bragging about, hey, look at what I did. Look what I did. And then. I'm like, I'm busy. What do you want? Hurry up, call me. Okay, wow, that's nice. Okay, text me a picture. I look at it, so okay, wow. But I mean, it was crazy. He would text me all these things, but I loved it. He was engulfed in everything that he was doing. And with the Sharpies, he loved Sharpies. Like, what is that? You can do this on canvas. You can just, and it's amazing. It was enthralling to see what he could do. And then going to the beach is right there. Just, you know, I want to be healthy. He wanted to stay lean. He wanted to be fit. It's like, you have to focus on your health first. You have to eat it. I mean, we were both gaining weight, but he, I was gaining more weight than him. <laughs> okay. So really what's important, honestly, here in Miami Dade, Cody. Cody, the Miami Dade Commission here, he would go to what's called Cody, C O D I, Commission of Disabilities Issues Board, to improve the disability and environments here, community and accessibility. And he would want me to go, but he'd also do the emergency management system to the hurricane emergency preparedness and he was involved in everything
something. And he would want me to come join him and go to these things, the District 6 with Commissioner Sosa. It's like, no, I can't. I don't have time. I have all these meetings. You, you're you doing this all, but I don't. And he had, I had to quit, but he just kept on. He kept going to all these meetings with or without an interpreter. He's like, I can't. I have to go. He fight for the rights and issues of improvement. So it didn't matter whether it's emergency preparedness, hurricane preparedness, uh, deaf interpreter. He was also a deaf interpreter. He would fight for that improvement in the rights and equal access. So I really applaud him for that. I'm sorry, I've got to go through this thing fast. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so about 12, 13 years ago, I set up this organization, nonprofit organization called Waving Hands, Carolina and myself. This was signed for Waving Hands. And Jose was really involved, deeply involved with it, with the workshops. And, and I even did the sex science workshop. And he never, ever missed an event that I hosted, that we hosted. He would go to everyone. He would advertise. He would pester people, give me feedback on how I could improve it, what they needed to be fixed. And I would just take it because I respected his opinion and I wanted to listen to his feedback, but it didn't matter whether it was negative or positive. And I had to tweak it to be successful. And Waving Hand was great all the way up until, I mean, he, well, he was doing Starbucks and everything. It's like, it just became overwhelming for me. He's like, don't worry, I'm going to do it. I'll, I'll do it. So way over, over by the airport, like we had 150, 150, 60 people breaking records at Starbucks near the airport for like six years until COVID. And then everything kind of fell apart. And so now we've reestablished with uh, Neil working with me now doing Starbucks. I really appreciate Neil, but didn't want to give up. We can't give up Starbucks because we cherish the interpreters and we really care that they meet deaf individuals, get involved with the deaf community to pick up the signing no voice, voice off. And you know that. And we catch people. But it's really, truly sad. Waving Sands did shut down. And we sat down and did a presentation. I had to remove myself. It's like, you're kidding. Really? Stop. It's like, no, I'm serious. We're done. I don't have time. I got to focus on my children. You know, why don't you take it? Like, no, 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 I don't want to take it. Come on, I'll give it to you. He's like, no, I don't want it. You know, but you wanted the feedback. So you, he he loves Starbucks. So he type, kept on with Starbucks and we closed down waving hands. So I respect that. And for 10 years, we did that. We worked together in waving hands. But I mean, I really appreciate all the ones who were involved with that as well. And how he was involved. And one last thing here, Miami Dave, Paula Sargent. She was here. Valerie Smith. Gone. Ooh, and Anna Hernandez was also taken. And now, uh, who's it? Jose. Four, four amazing professors gone from here. It, it breaks my heart. I mean, I, I tip my hat to them, but it's time to carry on the torch because we're never going to give up. Jose wouldn't give up. We're not going to give up. So we need quality deaf professors here. So we want the program to continue as he wished. Myself and Jose, we were like brothers. I mean, we fought a lot. Yes, <laughs> we were. It's normal. You know, brothers and sisters, family, they fight, they argue, they disagree. They get mad at each other, I just, you know, over who's right or wrong. And then a month later, I say, oh, I'm so sorry and apologize. And I'm like, okay, fine. But I still loved him. I, we loved each other in that sense. But then, so then we would just get back to talking and everything. I don't know. I mean, it's normal. Get mad, love each other. Mad and love each other. Just the way life is. Just like like real brother and sisters. I was like, this is my brother's like, yeah, well, it's the same thing with us, man. We're going to get our arguments, but that's just the way we did it. So just if you have disagreements, you have issues, sit down and solve it because you don't know how short life is. That's what I'm learning. That's what I've learned. I love this guy. I never, I will never forget him. And one of the final things on December 9th, he called me. He's like, Miami Dade College, this shirt. You should wear it to 
he loved the Miami because like, come on, I got other things. I got doing my own table and everything like that. We got to sell it. Like, no, no, no. I mean, then he would put on this hat and do it, go around. It was, he's like an angel, the shining everywhere. People just looked at him and gravitated toward him. It's like, he didn't care about the negative. Just, he would hug anybody. He would gravitate toward anybody. The positive, the love that he protrude, portrayed. Is, and he was gone so soon. The shock on the next day. I just can't believe it. Sitting at my table, I had volunteers there. Vanessa was one of my volunteers. Annette was one of my volunteers. We're all helping out. And Jose was like, hey, I'm going to tell you, like, don't steal my students. Don't steal my volunteers. They're, they're my favorite people. It's like, oh, well, you make sure you bring them back, okay? And so they went and was, he was introducing them to all the different people. And so when that was all done, they came back. But he loved playing this game of stealing my students or stealing my volunteers. But it was fun, just banter back and forth. told me that his one of his main goals was the success of this interpreter program, hiring more deaf professors to teach the ASL classes who are experienced. You know that really ASL needs that as a native language to teach. Yes, hearing hearing individual professors could be teaching the interpreting program itself for the interpreting classes, but he wanted deaf, deaf presenters, deaf, uh, completely deaf, fully deaf professors teaching the ASL classes. And what he really hated was cultural appropriation, autism. Hiring more deaf professionals who can teach ASL classes. For example, some people complain about Jose, me, you know, Ray Vega. Oh, they're all deaf. It's like, no, 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 no. It's not about deaf. We're the only three deaf professors. That's our role to encourage the students to, to have their receptive skills. And we're thankful for the hearing professors that are here, Julie Sherman and the different ones that are here. We really appreciate you. We respect you for that. And Jose's looking down on us and hearing these names and the success from these uh, different students from Orlando is like, oh, I want to go to Miami Dade. I don't care about going to any other university or college. I want to go to Miami Dade because the program is so fantastic because of Jose and the way he represented us. And that's what I, I believe that. And I am taking that on myself. And it's not to, you know, bash the hearing individuals or anything like that. We love you, but we treasure American Sign Language. And I appreciate the deaf individuals, the deaf community being patient with the learning interpreters and the spelling of their names and their learning, just this progression. It's a risk. We don't have enough interpreters, qualified interpreters. We need more, honestly, to help out. Please help his dream come true with the interpreting program. Come, let's build it. Get in contact with Mr. Lopez, Dr. Vasquez, yes. Venez. Venezuela. Venezuela. And we don't want this program to shut down. It is that important to us. Thank you all, Jose's sister, family, Eduardo. Thank you so much for your support and coming and listening to our stories. I know that he would be happy to see everyone here. And I know he's here in spirit and we celebrate that. There's just so many experiences. I have so many things that, you know, who, you know, who Jose is, you know, <laughs> I could just go on forever with the stories that he had. He just never gave up. He was never lazy ever, ever. His mind was constantly going to progression and he was 69. He, it was impossible. 69, almost 70 years old, still going at it strong. I love you, Jose. And now he's up in heaven meeting deaf, deaf individuals, famous deaf people, and his parents. Thank you very much. Love you all. Well done. Thank you, John Paul. Thank you for sharing. I would like to now have the next presenter. 
What? Lirium. Lirium. And and that each other great friends of Jose Granda. Where is Lyrium? Is she coming? Ah. Uh, hello, my daughter, Yarisa. I'm trying to encourage her to come up here to speak with me, uh, but she's grieving too much and she doesn't want to come up. But she's a graduate here of MDC, you know, and she really worked hard. And, you know, she's trying to transition and she used to go to the Starbucks all the time and all the meetings that were taking place and had a really great time. And together, we're going to really miss Jose. And we know that he's in heaven looking down on us now. Much Lyrium. Uh, our next person presenter coming up is Neil Tug. Uh, Tug. So uh, also a good friend of Jose. So we want to thank him for coming up. So uh, hold on one second. Uh, I want to make sure that. Can you come up here with me as well? I want to make sure that we're able to have this on video. Please come up. Um, I'm speaking to the spirit of Jose. I'm sorry. Um, I feel him here so strongly. And, you know, when I'm saying I want Jose to come up, you know, I remember we used to drink beers together. Um, he's always been with me, you know, and we would drink our beers. And right now I just want to share a beer with him in spirit. Uh, he's been a friend, a long time friend of mine. We grew up together. And I remember we used to go out on the boats together he was always teasing me and everything like that, you know, and mocking us on the boat. But, you know, we would always be on the boat and we had, you know, like fabulous time together, teasing each other. He even mooned me. <laughs> you know, there were signs he would moon me and I'd be like, you can't do that, Jose. But, you know, he didn't care. You know, we'd be out on the, on the water and he would move me and I would be like, oh, my God, I can't believe you just did that, you know. But those were the kind of adventures that we had. And he was the person that was always having a good time. You know, he liked the party. You couldn't tell him he can't do something because he was going to do it. You know, if he had to go out all night and party, that was what he was going to do. You know, also, he would ask me to go out and swim with him. You know, so we would swim as well. And then while we were swimming, you know, we would see some boats and we would actually come up on the boats and start fishing and, you know, and everything like that. You know, we could, I, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I'm intimidated. I, we can't be doing this. But Jose, he didn't care. He didn't care. You know, he was fully sold and fully committed, you know, and everything like that. So uh, we would get out and we would get on these boats and we would do these things. Jose was always encouraging me to come out and do these fun adventures with him. You know, one thing that he really enjoyed was playing golf as well, you know, and, and we weren't skilled at golf, you know, we were hitting a ball all over the place, nothing like that, but we were still having fun. You know, we knew how to party. You know, and then occasionally, you know, we would go out and we would talk about different people and things like that, you know, and there would be a woman or a lady, you know, and everything like that. And, you know, we would see how they were dressed and we would kind of, you know, we try to be respectful and honor, you know, honor them and everything like that. At the same time, you know, we also, when we go back to, you know, the campus and his life here at the campus and everything like that, you know, he was very dedicated to Miami Day College. Of course, he was a graduate of Gallaudet as well. Um, so, you know, we, we just spent a lot of time together. I've known him for a lot of time and a long time. And I just want to say that I want to honor him. I want to say that he was very open, you know, like he was not afraid to be who he was. And he was open with the interpreting community. He was open to everybody. He did not hide who he was. He did not mince words. You know, he was very comfortable and who he was and uh, didn't hide it.
you know, sometimes I get this, uh, a ding or this, uh, you know, I feel that I've got a message and I'm thinking it's going to be from Jose, but it's not from Jose. Um, he's not with us, but I do want to recognize and honor his family members that are here right now, his brother, Eduardo and his sister Maria, my, my heart really aches for you and for Jose. And then I look out and I see other people that, you know, who were very close with him as well. Just want to let you all know that I love you very much. And that this is a very sad moment for all of us, but I know that he's up above in heaven and he's watching down on us and i i'm really thankful for the interpreters that really have benefited from him and i want to say i love the interpreters that are here thank you so much for interpreting i really appreciate it um i guess who's next i guess okay I want to thank Nia so much. Uh, I'm not presenting again. Don't worry. <laughs> Next up presenting, we have Jessica Riling. Oh, Jose's favorite student from way back. All right, give it up, Jessica. So she's also a CODA. Uh, CODA is a child of deaf adults. Don't be ashamed of being a coda. Be proud of it. She's saying, shh, don't tell everybody. He's saying, no, be proud of it. Oh, I was only teasing. Um, yeah, I am proud of it. Uh, I do have a video that I want to show real quick. It encapsulates the ex my experience with Jose. Uh, I just want to let you know there's going to be a male voice in the background that's going to be narrating. I want to give you an opportunity to watch the video first, and then afterwards, I'm going to come up and give you the signed presentation of what the male voice is saying. I don't want to do it simultaneously because it'll be too distracting. So at this time, just go ahead and watch the video. Thank you, guys. Yeah. There's a male voice there, just to let you I know. I do not sleep. I am a thousand winds that blow. I am the diamond glints on snow. I am the sunlight on ripened grain. I am the gentle autumn rain. When you awaken in the morning's hush, I am the swift uplifting rush of quiet birds in circle flight. I am the soft stars that shine at night. Do not stand at my grave and cry. So I'm just going to go ahead and tell you what the voice was saying in the background now. You've already heard it, so there's no need for voice interpretation, but I'm going to put it out in sign, but give me just a moment because this is really emotional for me. pick up with the interpretation at this point um excuse me i'm really emotional but for those of you i want you to know that jose is there he's been my friend i met him when i met him you know i was a student at miami Dade college i met him on my first day and he looked at me in the parking lot uh, you know i had parked <laughs> way off uh, far away you know, and as I was walking in, you know, I'm trying to figure out where I should go and what I should be doing and everything like that, you know, and I'm trying to look at this map and like that, you know, and open the door to go in, you know, and I'm like, not acting like a hearing person, right? So uh, I go in and I'm trying to find out, you know, th this is how the deck room was set up. Let me just give you our description. It's in a circular fashion and Jose is standing right there in the middle. And I open the door and all eyes are on me. And of course, I'm feeling a little embarrassed at the moment and I'm shaking and I'm nervous. I'm like, oh, that's Jose. I've heard stories about Jose. Oh my God, that's him. And so he looks at me and he's like, what's your name? 
and you know I'm nervous. So this is how I'm signing my name, and I'm I'm trying not to. So, what's your parents' name? That's what I want to know. And I'm like, oh, okay. So you know, I have my dad Ricardo, and then Robert. I'm sorry, and my mom Vicky. Oh, I know who your parents are. Get over here. Come give me a hug, you know, and everything like that. So, you know, he was welcoming right from the start. And immediately we had this bond. And I want you to know that 13 years ago, my dad passed. Three years ago. I'm so sorry. Interpreter mistake. So my dad passed away as well. And, you know, I, I understand, you know, how... They went to school with my dad, so my parents know him very well. And, you know, Jose was there to support me and the loss of my father. Thank you. I'm sorry. He was. He is an amazing person. We had this amazing relationship. Yes, there was that teasing banter that we always had ever since I was... You know, you would see, he would sign it this way, right? If you guys know Jose. Cactus, right? You might think cactus, but we were like a cactus to each other. You know, and then he would be like, this is who I am. And I'm like, well, I can be that way too, you know? So um, if another person who we didn't like, you know, also uh, we would use the flamingo too. So we would be like, oh, a shy flamingo, you know. So we would use these different signs to, you know, communicate and code with each other. Thank you for your patience. Um, thank you for this opportunity. I really feel blessed. I know that he's looking down and that he loves us. Um, I like. I remember his smile. I remember his teasing manner. And I thank you all, and I love you all so very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jessica. And so now what we have is a little bit different. We're going to have four video presentations that have been previously recorded. So we have Myra. Castro from New Jersey. We have Nancy Rourke, and she's made a wonderful um, compilation of her art. Uh, we have <clears throat> Nadine Bozeman, and we have Jessica, um, the another interpreter as well, Jessica Montoya. So I really, really appreciate and thank you so much for these videos. So this is really a special celebration for Jose Granda. I want to introduce myself. I'm Myra Castro. This is my name sign, Castro. And I want to offer my condolences to Jose's family, his sisters, his nieces and nephews, all the all those who are in, in attendance here today. Really, I have to express to you Jose's life and how he how I was included in his life. You know, I've known Jose for about 11 years now. And to give you an idea of who Jose was, he was we we were siblings. We were best friends. We were thick as thieves from the very beginning. We always shared things together. He always was there for me. He texted me every day back and forth. We would talk about different subjects ranging from everything about life, working together. You know, we were always just there together, uh, sharing a, a wavelength, you know? Um, you know, he was very strongly Cuban uh, and culturally Cuban, and so was I. Now I'm from New Jersey, right? And there's a lot of Cubans in my family. And we were very, very proud Cubans. And Jose was thrilled 
to be enveloped into the Cuban culture. And I was too. We have our identity. We have who we are. And we would always discuss about Cuban culture and, and different traditions and, and how diversity. And one thing was cafecito. Oh, my goodness. Jose was crazy about cafecito. I was too. You know, this is really heartbreaking for me. When I was told of about what happened, this was the last text that I got from him was on December 9th. He encouraged me to go buy a pillow that had the word peace on it. So it was in a, in a kind of a shape of a curve and it was it said P E A C E. And I was, I was touched. That's what was the connection there? And then two days later, he's gone. I haven't bought the pillow yet, unfortunately. I mean, peace really applies to his life. And now he's gone. December 11th. I, I couldn't believe it when I heard. I couldn't believe that he was gone. We always shot texts back and forth every day. We would get up on VP and just chat. My class, I teach... Um, high school ASL and my first experience when I was struggling he was the person that helped me he was help, he was the one who helped me teach as a teacher as a mentor and when I was working with kids with disabilities this was so challenging for me and it really he helped me so well to be comfortable teaching ASL teaching these students and he was so good at it and I was so lucky to have him it made me a better person. It made me a better teacher. I was able to be patient with the students. He taught me patience. He taught me teaching. He taught me to take the time and, and process things. I mean, he would listen. He would always listen to me. I always would listen to him too. I can't believe he's gone. I wish I could text him every day. You know what? Every morning, it didn't matter what time it was of the day. We could call. We could call him VP in the morning. You know, he was a morning person. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm crying. I miss his message, his story. I miss his smile. I miss his smile every morning. I want to share... Something I loved about him, his jokes. I loved his jokes. His face, I mean, you know, his tendency, he would add all kinds of things to his face, right? He would, um, you know, all kinds of things on his lips and on his face. And he sometimes would be in drag. And I felt, I feel his smile is, whenever he sent me pictures, I've saved all of them. And that way I can look after December 11th, I can look and remember. I can remember his smile. I can remember the emotion and cry with him. You know, for me, my emotions were, were up and down. And I feel like I was lost. I lost my best friend. I lost my brother. I, I, I don't know why. He's gone. And you know what? It, there's so much pain and suffering in the world. And now, now he's in peace. Now he's, now he's in a better place. You know, it's really tough for me. It's really hard for everyone. I know everybody that's here in the audience, I, I know, especially the people in the community and the interpreting community. He mentioned about the community and the interpreters as well. And, you know, all of us, it's, he had such a big heart for all of those people. And we we discuss things about, you know, interpreting and the goals and how the interpreting program and interpreting field. And that's, what he was encouraging. Hello, 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 and good morning, good afternoon, whatever it may be. My name is Nadine Bozeman. It's signed this way. 
at Miami Dade College in their ITP program. I was the lab manager for the ASL. Um, I'm really sorry that I, I can't be there today to celebrate Jose and his life. It's really grieving for him, and I'm still in shock. When it happened, the shock, like, I couldn't believe Jose, when they were telling me that that morning, you know, about Jose, the sweet man that I met, the person that I met with such a beautiful heart, he taught me so much. He was my pre professor before. He was my mentor. And more importantly, he was my good friend. And I was so blessed to be able to work with him for over 12 years at Miami Dade College. Yes, 12 years. I can't tell you how much I learned from him. And I mean, I learned a lot. I got to travel with him. Uh, we would go to different events and workshops. And I was always learning. And, but at the same time, you know, he's left us with such joy. Knowing that he left in a strange way, but at the same time that I know that he was smiling. And I know that he wants us to continue to communicate and teach about ASL and to engage people because he was never shy about it. And he never let his disability hold him back. He was very open about his disability and he didn't care. You know, he was out there and he let everybody know who he was and he was proud of being deaf. Really blessed to know Jose and to Jose's family. I just want to say to you, thank you for sharing your brother with us and for allowing us to experience his love and your love. And thank you for the opportunity to know him. Thank you so much. So in summary, I just want to say that my heart goes out to his family, to the friends, to his coworkers, all of you. Continue to think positive. We've got to continue to spread that positivity just like Jose did, especially when it comes to ASL. We can't be shy about it. We've got to stand up for our rights and your rights, just like Jose did, and do it all with a smile, just like Jose did. This was Jose with his pinky out. You remember that? Uh, we used to go swimming every morning. You know, we'd go back and forth, back and forth, swimming these laps and everything like that. And, you know, he was always taking care of his body. He had to look good. You know, he had to make sure that he was putting on that persona. So really, uh, to his family, my heart goes out to you. I love you all. I love you. Thank you. Take care, and I hope to see you around someday. Love you. Jose, I love you very much. I am Nancy Rohr. N3 is my sign name. I am devastated. And I feel like an emptiness inside me, like something is gone. Thinking of Jose Granda and how I met him, it was through my brother in law, Bob who is deaf and gay. Bob is the brother of my husband, Joe. They are both deaf. Bob knew Jose for many years. I would say a total of 37 years. Bob introduced me to Jose at the RAD, RAD, the Rainbow Alliance of the Deaf, in Denver, Colorado. I went and had a table, a booth set up to sell art 
when Bob introduced us. Since then till now, it's been about 11 years that I have personally known Jose. And how unusual and interesting that Bob, who first introduced me to Jose, it ends up being Bob who also informed me that Jose had passed away. It's like the beginning and the end have come full circle. I want to discuss art. His art. I would like to share that with you. And some of the pictures that you could see of all of Jose's Granda's paintings that he made himself. As you can see, Jose's artistic signature is like his seal. Take a closer look to understand what it means. Now you understand his artistic signature and, his, and the seal. He used his initials, J-O-G with the O in the middle. That represents his name. He never went to school to study art. He was a self-taught artist. It's very, very, very neat. He would always call me asking for advice, my artistic advice, tips and strategies what I did, how to do things for himself, how to bring that into his art. He loved making art that related to the deaf culture. Finger spelling was in his art many times. Cuban culture as well. The flamingos is what he loved the most. You could see flags, the coffee, el café. He truly was wonderful and skilled. With on, honestly only a few years of painting that's all his painting experience was very short for the incredible paintings he did The symbol of the hand represents the senses, like smell, hearing, taste, all the senses, all five senses, but with the sense of hearing removed, representing the deaf. The uh, ring finger is put down. So this sign is actually from Nepal. 
Jose and I spray painted these symbols in Wynwood. Two years later, Jose actually went back to check and he saw that they had faded away. So he fixed it, he resprayed it, he cleaned it up nice. Now it's on me. Now it's my turn to go back and check on them. Jose Granda loved taking me through all the parts of Miami. He was the best tour guide, showing me so much of the city. He was very knowledgeable of the Miami artistic history. The most popular place we both enjoyed going to very often was Wynwood. It was full of murals, and we would go exploring them all. We often saw the famous orange, the Fl Floridian symbol called the Atomico. There is one really important artwork of Jose's um, that I want to show you. He hired a deaf artist named Guy Wonder. Jose hired him to make a very personal art piece. That was very personal to Jose himself. Jose was a wonderful person, a big heart. He was always so kind, so nice. He always loved to make people laugh, always teasing and joking. And he would message me every day. We would message back and forth and communicate through video phone and, and we would just stay in contact all the time. I truly miss him and truly love him so very much. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica Montoya. This is my sign name. I was a pre former student of Jose um, back at MDC. I miss him. He was a good person with a good heart, funny. He loved teasing and joking with people all the time. We would sit down and together and just, we became good friends. His passing was really tough. I haven't experienced that type of closeness or family death or anything in a long time. However, he impacted my life so greatly and taught me everything that I know right now. And I'm doing what I'm doing because of him. He taught me everything related to interpreting, finger spelling, signs, culture, deaf culture, the works. He taught me everything. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank you for your support, for the friends, family, being able to talk with me, sit down with me, converse about the situation, the accident. It was terrible. And I just can't obsess over that right now. I have to talk about Jose and his peace and his blessing. He's no, in no more pain. And I just hope that he's happy now and watching over us. Thank you for the opportunity to share this video with you all. And hope you enjoy your rest of your day and your evening. And I know that he'll be with us in spirit. I love you all. Take care. Videos that we had, all four of them. Wow.
the working with Nancy Rourke now, the artist. She's going to come up and present later. And right now, though, professor currently at Miami Dade College, Ray Vega. He's going to tell his stories. I met Jose when and where? Right here at this campus, Miami Dade College. At that time, I was a student. I was having to take ASL4 class to get certification for ASLTA and also for a national certification to be able to teach. Um, so at that time, Jose and Paula Sargent were the people that were going to screen and evaluate me. Um, so, you know, they did that and I passed and I was into ASL4. Um, you know, I had to keep practicing, especially on improving some classifiers and things like that. And I realized that he's been teaching it for a long time. In fact, I think back all together now, uh, 17 years. Uh, we also got to know each other personally outside of college as well. You know, we would talk about our Cuban heritage, you know, because both of us being Cuban, having Cuban families, nothing like that. Um, we would get together in Fort Lauderdale because I lived in Miami. He lived in West Palm Beach. And, you know, we would go to the gay bars and the clubs and different events and everything like that. And then um, in year 2011, at that time, um, you know, I was the secretary for FAD, you know, and we were going to go together. And he asked me if I wouldn't mind being his roommate um, at the hotel for the FAD. Uh, Florida Association of the Deaf Conference and everything like that. And we've been friends for a while now. So I was like, oh, okay. And then, you know, every if the, as things progressed, you know, we would travel together. We would go to different local, state, and different community events. We would do silent weekends and other things, traveling all over the place. Uh, we had the pleasure of traveling together and, you know, hitting many states and communities and We travel was in August. So, uh, since 2007, I have been a teacher here at Miami Dade College as well. And people know that, you know, Jose and I are good friends and that we talk a lot and everything like that, you know. So I had other uh, professors and students come up to me and they'd be like, hey, why does Jose invent all these different signs? And I'd be like, um, you know, he would also come up with name signs and things like that. And I'd be like, yes, no, um, you know, but he had different perspectives on deafness and deaf culture, you know, that were um, intrinsic to him. And sometimes, you know, he would create things just for enjoyment, you know, and for, you know, teasing culture as well and like that. There were times where we clashed, you know, on politics and, you know, philosophies and things like that, you know, but we would often discuss it. Sometimes we would agree to disagree and just move on. But, hey, we had those times. I also learned a lot of signs from him. For example, this must, like it's a really strong must with uh, all four fingers. Also, I learned a sign that not my problem that he does around his nose and everything like that. And then I would tease him by, I would use some of my, I say, of course. And then I would do like C sign, like S I C, you know, get somebody to look over that way. Just different things to, you know, to go banter back and forth with him and everything like that. Given students' name signs, that was one thing that he focused on. Uh, back in 2020 and 2021, when COVID, COVID hit and everything was shut down, you know, we were having a conversation. Uh, he had this conversational skills class that he was supposed to teach, um, but it ended up getting canceled. It wasn't his fault. It just that uh, we didn't have enough enrollment to continue with the class. So, and also there were budgetary issues and concerns at that time as well. So what did he do? He decided to take his creative energy and focus on his art and his deafness and his Cuban culture and all that diversity. You 
know that uh, when COVID hit, we weren't able to do live teaching and everything was uh, now Zoom related or over a video. And he really didn't want to be a part of that. No, that wasn't something comfortable for him. So in the fall of 2021, when it went back to live classes, you know, that's when he started back up with uh, Starbucks and uh, all those different events for deaf socials and things for people to come up, you know, and like that. He was uh, a free spirit and, you know, always going out and socializing. have a long conversation he insisted on it being on the video phone you know we could text for like short things but if we were going to have an extended conversation he always wanted a video phone and he was always telling me i need to download this app and he download this app you know like that so that we can communicate we can have these conversations sometimes he was annoyed with my facial expressions you know, or, or he would always annoy me with his facial expressions, I should say, you know, he would be doing these crazy facial expressions that we've come to know from Jose, you know, trying to get uh, attention of someone or something like that. There was also a serious side of him that I got to know that maybe other people didn't get to know that as you know, we were discussed late into the night and when I say late into the night, I mean, late into the night. I mean, he would go on and on and on and on and everything like that, you know, and I'd be like, okay, I've got to get in bed. And he would start putting on his funny like PJs and his hats and different things that he would wear and everything like that. Um, and maybe even curls and things like that. <laughs> but uh, we always had good conversations. There were three things that he was extremely proud of, his deafness, being gay, and his Cuban culture. These things meant a whole lot to him, and they always have and always will be. Uh, I remember going to the Rainbow Alliance for the Deaf. Uh, we went in Colorado, sorry, in Toronto. And, you know, uh, at that time, that's one of the times where we really bonded and became good friends. He loved to travel and do workshops, both local and all over and like that. One of his favorite things was the Silent Weekend. And also in 2020, that shut down as well. That was his favorite conference to go and present at. His favorite workshop was doing ABC stories and of course the sexual signs. Um, and you can see some of his DVDs are available here for you guys if you wanna take a look at them like that. Um, he would call me often to go and to watch as he was doing his recordings for his VD, uh, DVDs. And so that gave him some feedback and things like that. You know, and he, I would take notes and he would be very touched by my feedback and he would actually listen to it. At Silent Weekend, um, I was introducing myself. I think it was like 2019 or somewhere around there or anything like that. Um, but I had three workshops. One was related to characterization. So I kept going and changing costumes and coming back out and everything like that to show characterization. And I remember he came up to me afterwards and he said, you know what? So our interpreting friends came up to me and they were like, you've ruined Ray. He used to be innocent and sweet. And now he looks just like you. He's a mini me. So I was like, well, hey, Jose taught me. What do you expect? Sometimes I would also go to his week sh sh workshops at Silent Weekend and other workshops. And I would sit in the front, you know, and people would raise their hands and everything like that, you know, and they would come up and or there wasn't time for them to come up and everything like that. So Jose would call on me and say, hey, wait get up here right now. You're going to copy sign for me. And I'd be like, oh, okay. You know, um, we know we have to do that for our interpreting students. And that's just part of interpreting. Yes. His sense of humor was over the top. I mean, we would sit and laugh all the time. And oftentimes we were thinking the same things and just would laugh hard. I remember one time in Wilton Manors in Fort Lauderdale, you know, we had gone to eat and he had forgot to bring his reading glasses. Oh, shit. So, you know, he's trying to read, you know, so it's like, Ray, um, so what do I do? I'm like, you want to borrow my reading glasses? He's like, sure. So I gave him my reading glasses and it was perfect. He was able to read. But there were some times where he didn't have his glasses and I was like, deaf blind. Okay, I've got to do this for him and interpret from the menu for him. So, I mean, yeah, it was like that sometimes too. Once in a while, you know, uh, we would get together and I would have clothes that maybe didn't fit me appropriately. Maybe they were too big or too small or anything like that, you know, and Ray would be uh, criticizing me and saying, hey, you know, you need to break something that's going to fit you a little better, you know, and things like that. You know, we go to the parking lot. He would find something in his car and dress me up and make me look good.
There were also times where we would go to see movies like on deaf, a deaf movie, maybe like Quiet Place or Quiet Place 2, you know, um, and they were open to the general audience. And so they would have closed captioning. So we had to wear those goggles, uh, those glasses with the captioning. But And of course, Jose wanted to be the center of attention. No shock to anybody, anything like that. You know, whenever there was a celebration or something coming on, he always had that entrance that he had to make, you know, and I was, I was like, come on, Jose, just get in there and get up there. You know, and there were things that we would sometimes whisper, you know, about ASL and deaf culture, you know, you know how we do. We would sign quietly about someone and, and what they look like or what they're doing. And we, you know, we would do it and deaf cultural way. And his favorite color was blue. Of course, you guys all know that. He was always dressed in blue. And his favorite uh, animal, which everybody knows and have heard many stories about so far, is the flamingo. Yes, he loved dogs and cats too, but flamingos were his favorite. Um, one of the, my dog, Tigger, you know, that I had for 17 years, you know, whenever we would go out, he knew that I had a schedule because I had to get back for the dog and everything like that. And he would be always be like, oh, yeah, remember, you got to get back and take care of your dog. So, uh, you know, my dog died two years ago. So... He would tell me, you know, I know you want another dog or something like that, you know, like that. But he would tell me, you know, we can focus on getting another dog at another time. But at the time, you know, I was focused on my mom and taking care of her and everything like that. But he always had stories, especially at Halloween, which was one of his favorite times. So Halloween was a dual celebration for him, both at um, October 30th and October 31st. And he was always insistent that, you know, I would dress up and be a part of it with him and everything like that. I would want to do something like cute or, you know, and like that. But he was always out there and flamboyant. And through our 17 years together, I realized how impactful and inspirational he's been to me um, and how he's influenced my life. He and I would, you know, get together and gossip like that people would do. You know, we would talk about different things in the news and what's going on and stuff like that. And as, as all of you have already mentioned, he would text us every day. I don't know how he had time to text everybody all over the world every day, but he somehow managed to do it. And Ray's been like a big, I mean, uh, Jose's been like a big brother to me. And now he's gone and I miss him. I you know, his family's here, you know, and everything like that. And I know they shared their stories as well. Um, you know, Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, they were together. I've heard stories about that too. And we're all experienced this loss. Um, even though he's gone though, he's going to continue to be a part of this college for generations to come. And, uh, I just want to say, you know, I love you, Jose, and thank you to everybody out there. I love you. Thank you so much, Ray Vega. And I want to introduce the next presenter, Annette. That she is a coda. Valido, Annette Valido. And now she is um, pursuing to be an interpreter. She is an interpreter, interpreter. Hello, thank you everyone for coming and for those who are joining online as well. So I was lucky to meet Jose. He became my really good friend. We were able to share stories about life, personal things as well. The first time I met Jose, and you know, I can't just sign Jose. I have to say Jose, right? Jose Granda. So at Starbucks, I wasn't nosy, but I was just watching how he signs and his body expression and movement. And I was just staring and looking. So he saw me and then he turned around and gave me an attitude. And I said, oh, how embarrassing. He caught me. I was, you know, flushed and embarrassed. 
he caught me staring at his beautiful signs and I never forgot that day and that first look. The next semester, I took classes, conversational skills, and fingerspelling as well. And as you know, in class, we sit in a circle so we can all visually see each other sign and talk. And he would stand in the middle saying, asking questions like, what was there? Why do you want to be an interpreter? And he would end with the sign, why? As emphasized, to emphasize. I remember said, and I remember saying, I want to work with a deaf. I wanted to do business, but now I'm changing my career. I want to be an interpreter. So I remember at that moment, he just kept asking me tons of questions. He said, what's your name? What's your parents' name? And he, of course, he knew my mom from St. Augustine, the school FSDB, the Florida School of the Deaf and Blind. He knew my mom. So then he, you know how he says must with all five fingers. I must speak to you after class. And I was willing. So after class, he hugged me. And he said, you look just like your mom. The same body type, the same facial expressions. I can't believe it. It's like your mom is here, you know. So I was, again, a little bit embarrassed about that. But we became quick and easy friends. During COVID, there was no socializing, no events. He told me, you need to download Zoom so we can communicate. So I said, okay, fine, I'll do that. So I downloaded it. And during the whole COVID era, the whole time, we would just chat back and forth through video all the way until December 9th. About family, life, art, our work, interpreting. And his goal for interpreting was that we needed to have a good attitude and respect for the deaf community. He valued the deaf community. And that was a huge part of his heart. I remember he would play the lottery and he said, if I ever win the lottery, I am going to set up an apartment building with two or three floors for only deaf. So we could just socialize just like back in, in FSDB, just like back in school when we were at the dorms and just socialize. win the lottery that is what I'm gonna do I'm gonna set up that building just as he wished so during COVID as all that improved you know Starbucks came back so I was willing to go and and on October 21st in Starbucks when we started up in October of 2021 He went every Friday, every first Friday of the month. So we would show up and relax and with all the deaf at Starbucks. And of course, there were other deaf events like the Deaf Expo, Deftopia, different events that we would go out together. But it wasn't the same. It's not going to be the same without him now that he's gone. On December 9th, we were together in Deaf Opia all day and all night. It was a shock when I heard that he passed away. I will miss him. I love you, Jose. She said it. To voice for no voice for Annika. Hello, thank you, Annette. Now, please welcome to the stage Anika Brown. She's an inter student here at Miami Dade College. Thank you.
over my heart. I met Jose back in 2017 in conversational skills class. It took him about two weeks later for him to realize that I may need some extra help. He approached me and offered to tutor me. I graciously accepted. We would meet weekly through my pregnancy. The pandemic and two active duty tours via Duo. He made sure I had downloaded Duo. <laughs> I can't explain how much he, his love for teaching, and how much he went out of his way to help me. He even said when I gave birth to my son at six months, he will teach him how to sign. And I agreed. Whenever he traveled, he will always bring gifts for my children and for myself. The day I had to tell him that I was a police officer and also a soldier, for me, I didn't know what to expect. But surprisingly, he was actually ecstatic to know he had a friend who was a police officer and told me when he comes to the city and get a ticket, he'll call me. He wishes that there are more police officers out there that would know sign. And at least the basic registration, license, et cetera. I agreed as there wasn't much that I didn't agree with him on. But he told me to keep going because he knew I would be able to communicate with the deaf community. Class began September of last year. Jose called me and said, hey, I see your name on my roster. You finally signed up for my class. I told him yes. I did. October rolled around and it was his birthday. And his favorite was Halloween. We came to class and I was We came to class and he told us about an incident that happened maybe a week or so before. And I told him to always be careful driving. Whenever class ended, I never allowed him to walk by himself. I will walk with him to his car. As I sure, I made sure I parked right near him. When the holidays came around, he asked me what my plans were. And my normal was cooking and staying home and spending time with the family. So I would ask him, what are your plans? For Thanksgiving, he said, I'm going to my sister. She's going to cook and I'm going to eat. And we all know Jose loves food. He loves spending time with his family. He talk about his nieces, his nephew, his sister, his brother, and his life. On the Monday, on Monday, the week of Deptopia, after class, as we walked to our cars, we made plans to meet up with Annette at Defopia, have lunch, and spend some time with him and her at her house. My plans got shifted, and I ended up meeting them at the Deaf Night Out. We spoke and hung out, and we laughed. 
But every time before we left each other, we always told each other we love you. On December 12th, when I got the news, <laughs> as I was preparing for his class, which was the last day of semester, I didn't know what to do. I was shocked, in denial, <laughs> numb. I called him repeatedly hoping that it was just a mistake. <laughs> I text him repeatedly and pray for him to return my call <laughs> because it's not like him not to return. And then it became reality. <laughs> Miss Maria, Eduardo, <laughs> thank you for allowing us to share Jose with you. <laughs> because I know that Jose loves the police. This Maria, that centerpiece on your table, it's a sign for you. Mr. Eduardo, the centerpiece to your right with all his baby pictures. And that is for you. I never knew that I could miss a person so much until that awful day. It will never be the same. He will always be with me, all his gifts, his love, and the memories we share. Thank you. Wow, such a beautiful expression. Just the centerpieces there on the tables, just they're heartfelt. She's now my student in the past fall. She's an amazing person and jose told me about her say like, hey your student she's amazing she's like i had no idea really who she was but then wow it's, it's fantastic and our next speaker our dina services the department dr Ephraim, venezuela please welcome him to the stage Good afternoon. Um, as a dean of faculty, it's um, a privilege to serve the college, uh, working with our distinguished faculty. Uh, my, in my role, I'm in charge of you know, looking over curriculum, uh, making sure that we have a schedule, that enrollment is there to uh, uh, support our students in every possible way and uh, provide for the faculty, provide the tools, the resources for them to do the job, to do what they know best, which is teach. <clears throat> In that capacity, I uh, spend a lot of time with my faculty, um, different meetings, um, finding out what the needs are and providing for them what they need and looking for ways to elevate them as well so that they can do what they do best. I've known 
um, Professor uh, Jose Granda, since I arrived to the college 17 years ago. And um, during that time, I had different roles. And in addition to being part of the academic affairs, I was also chair of the department in uh, multiple occasions when there was a, um, a leadership gap in the department. So I had the opportunity to meet with uh, him and as well as uh, the other faculty in the uh, sign language interpretation program, like you know, also Professor Vega, uh, Professor Jebian, and many others. So I never knew him personally. My relationship with uh, Professor Granda was um, here at the college. And you start thinking about, you know, how short life is, right? Sometimes we're so busy in our uh, different roles that, and because of the nature of the job that we have, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to um, uh, establish those bonds, uh, more personal bonds with our colleagues. So, but still hurts. So, and therefore I like to extend my condolences to the family uh, for the loss, but also to the faculty, because I know how close they were. Um, my meetings with uh, the uh, SLI faculty, um, they were very lively meetings, uh, especially with Professor Granda, very lively meetings. So you know what I mean. <laughs> and I realized that the reason why he was that way and he would argue with me and he will actually fight the meetings and say, no, but we need this, we need that, is because of the passion that he had for his students. He was truly committed to teaching. He was fully committed to our students, making sure that they had what they needed, uh, whether it was a schedule that worked best for them, the um, the lab, uh, making sure that we had the best technology, the latest technology in the lab for students to use. So in this time that we spent together, you know, and, and now that I am here, uh, and it's interesting because I walked in this, you know, early and I see before we started um, this event, uh, a lot of people laughing and, you know, having a good time and looking at the videos and, oh, my God, yes, I remember that. Oh, that was him. And it's all about this, right? At the end of the day, is is not our jobs, it's not our titles, it is exactly what we leave behind. Uh, we come with nothing. And when we leave, we leave with nothing. So it's not about getting stuff while we are on Earth is about what we leave behind. And in this case, uh, Professor Granda left a great legacy. And that's what really matters. The legacy that he left in the sign language interpretation program, the legacy that he left uh, with the students, the legacy that he left as a professional, as a colleague. And because of that, um, talk about legacy, the college, looked into um, what he's done uh, for our students and decided to extend that legacy in perpetuity. And therefore, the college established on his name, the Jose Granda Memorial Scholarship. And you will see on the slide, if you can guys put it up, a QR code, there you go. And you, with your phones, please, you know, um, click on the QR code. And that is where you can make your donations to the Jose Granda Memorial Scholarship. So donate now. Uh, the funds will be used for our students to continue uh, this program, to expand the program, to provide uh, a scholarship for our students to, who cannot afford um, attend college, who, but are interested in uh, becoming interpreters, that they can actually do so with these funds. So again, um, on behalf of the, the college, on behalf of the students, 
um, my condolences, but at the same time, let's continue celebrating his life uh, by uh, maintaining his legacy through this scholarship. Thank you very much. Have a great afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Venezuela. Really appreciate those kind words. Next will be Jose Joset, Pete Joset, with the English Communications Department. Please welcome him to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Josette Peach, and in a former life, I was the chairperson of the English and Communications Department, which includes the Sign Language Interpretation Program. My sign, American Sign Language, is non existent. The only word I ever learned was, I don't know anymore, but my communication with Jose Granda was excellent because of who Jose was. Jose was fun. Jose was funny. I remember when he lost weight. You remember when he just, he lost some weight and he came into the department and I was just, you know, praising him. And, and he gave me, he gave me this kind of, and we communicated like that. One of the things I remember about Jose's face is that he has dimples. And you would see his dimples because he smiled so much. And so I remember his dimples. And there was always a twinkle in his eyes. He always had that light. And so when I think of Jose, I, I keep on thinking of light and the light that we've lost by Jose's leaving this world. But there is a unique gift given to teachers, which is that we touch so many lives, as you have heard said, that truly Jose's light will twinkle like the stars into perpetuity. His focus was not just on Miami-Dade. His focus was on the wider community through Miami-Dade. And so his insistence that deaf culture be taught and be taught properly, that is the impact that will go far beyond just Miami-Dade. He was, he was known, actually. I mean, he's not a local person. He was known nationwide. He did presentations in various states, New York, Tennessee, and so on and so forth. So his, his field was, was very broad. But here at Miami-Dade, we felt a particular ownership for him because he was ours, he was here. And so, although I no longer work at the college, I retired seven years ago, but I still feel a connection with Miami-Dade. And when I heard of Jose's passing, it really hit me hard. Uh, but I choose to focus on the light. I choose to focus on the lives he's changed. I choose to focus on the fact that the students whose interpretation skills will facilitate the lives of others. 
that those are the things I want to keep in mind about Jose. And so to his family, my sincere condolences. Your loss is, of course, unimaginable. But also, I would encourage you to focus on the happy Jose, because he was such a happy person. He always managed to make me smile. And like I said, it was not because I could communicate in sign language. It was because of his personality. He was just a force of nature. And so let's be thankful that we had Jose for as long as we had him. Let's be thankful for the lives he's touched and for the fact that the world is a better place for him having been here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Josette, Pete. It was amazing. I've been working back and forth with you with Jose and everything. It's now where you retired. So enjoy your retirement. It's a beautiful message. Thank you. And next will be our friend, Jose's friend, Angela Martinez. Come on up to the stage. Hello, everyone. I know Jose. December 10th. Oh, my gosh. Every event. I would walk in with my daughter, with my husband. I'm back in the day with my boyfriend and was so he was so bright and vibrant and always smiling and always around people. He was an amazing person to see and to meet. Yeah. I was always really happy to see him. And if it was a long time, my daughter as well, we would always be so happy to see him. And she and he would pick on my daughter too, right before she went off to college and teased her. But one day, Sunday, I was relaxing with my husband. And one of my friends from Chicago called me and texted me. And I said, hello. But do you know, she said, that your friend Jose Granda passed away. And honestly, that just completely took me by surprise. And I looked at my husband and I said, we need to contact JP. We need to contact our friend because he's a friend of ours that we've known for so well. And it really hit me hard to know that in fact, he did pass away. I was in utter shock. I, I was feeling like there's no way. Today's such a beautiful day. And he was just smiling the day before when I had seen him, and now he's gone. And before I met Jose, I remember I was working with John Paul and waving hands. And I was volunteering in the events. I would notice that Jose Granda would always show up for every event. If it was a Christmas event or an Easter event or any special event that we had set up, he was there. He was always there with me with his huge smile. And it would always make me so happy to see him. No matter what, he was always there. If it was a small event or a big event, he was there. You can count on him being there. And he would always show off his deaf pride and just 
Wow. He was always so proud of being in the event and so proud of being deaf, of being a deaf Cuban person. He was loud and proud and vibrant. <laughs> and as time went on, I got to know him better. And I got to know how he was, how Jose was, and how he influenced me to become more positive about the deaf community and the deaf culture. He taught me and inspired me in deaf culture. And then I was not expecting, and then I was not expecting that him to be gone so soon, and now he's gone. Not it's going to be so hard to see that he's not around, that he's not in the events, that his smile is missing, that would make everyone happy. But I know in my gut that he's here. I feel that he's here. He's sitting there watching us. He's watching the family, his family, his friends, the deaf community. He's always there. I know it. I feel it that he's, I can feel his brightness of his smile around us and, and here. I want to give you. And I also want to give you a flamingo ornament to Natalie, to his niece. Do you mind coming up, please, Natalie? I want to give this to you. This flamingo ornament represents... Your uncle will always be here in spirit and through all of us and all of our memories. And he always wanted me to show you his love and to love you. He loved everyone in this room. He loved us all. Yes, I'll help you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Angela. She was so involved in Waving Hands, volunteering with Jose Granda at the tables, always helping. I want to thank you, Angela, so much. Appreciate you so much. And before I forget, I want to go back to Annette's story about Jose Granda, about Starbucks and how he looked at her for that first glance. I remember that I would tell her, go to Starbucks. You have to socialize with the deaf. And I just imagine exactly what she was saying that she was probably right. Like she said, looking at Jose Granta and he looked at her. Why are you looking at me right now? So that is so him. And I do know that once he found out that she was a coda, that hug is also so him. Right. And I want to encourage, you know, and, and just encourage everyone to really, he was always really encouraging everyone to fall in love with the deaf culture, to fall in love with the deaf and be, but I just love that tidbit. I wanted to thank you for that story. And now I want to present Vanessa Marrero. Her sign name is Vanessa who is someone who Jose Granta really saw was picking up the language, was very focused on her, picking on her, teasing her, but also helping her. And this is her sign name. And I would like to bring her up so she has a chance to explain why her sign name is this. Let's give a hand clap to her as she comes up. So today we're here to honor a person who I love and cherish very deeply, Jose. He was a teacher. He was my first teacher. He was my first mentor. And he was my friend. I'll never forget the first day that I met him. My first deaf event was at Starbucks. And I could remember I was sitting down there 
and he was sitting and I could sense Jose looking at me and I started to get nervous. And I was like, okay, what's going on? All right. And all of a sudden we connected. We, uh, we had our eyes connected and we started to see, we, I started to sign and he's like, oh God, your signing is terrible. You're, you need my help. I was like, ah, oh. I said, no, you have to, you, you have to. I said, okay, I accept. I remember our relationship at coffee, our, our connection at coffee night at Starbucks. Okay. And I had coffee all over me and he thought it was so funny and he, it was a riot to him. He was laughing so much and he was, you know, his devilish laugh, right? He had that mischievous laugh, right? And before I met Jose, I felt like, I felt like a tiny little fish in this gigantic ocean, right? And I was all alone, scared. And then this gigantic shark comes up to me, you know, and I don't feel alone anymore. Now I feel safe. I feel protected. The kind of person that Jose, that was the kind of person Jose was. Jose loved to teach. Students cherished him. His class was was always never boring, always exciting. His energy was always interesting. His personality was beautiful. The last day I saw him was at Defopia. I remember buying a, a dyed, uh, hair dye for me that was blue and jose bought it for me actually i remember he gave me this this hair dye and he said okay wow this has got to be for vanessa she has beautiful blue for her hair this is going to be great and right right around noon time we were ready to love we were ready ready to leave and I ran across the, the, the hallway to, to tell Jose bye. And I gave him a big hug. And the, the last thing he told me was, I'll see you on Monday. And that was the last time I would see him. I wish I knew that that was the last time I would see him because I would hug him so hard. I would have, uh, that hug would have lasted forever in my for me. Jose was an amazing role model. He enjoyed life. You know, he would tell me a couple of things. He said, first, you've got to have some attitude, your personality, and you've got to have respect. And you've got to have control. And you've got to use the word the lessons that we always remember. Yeah, these were the five lessons we talked about. Right. Before I was kind of a little bit timid, right? I was a student and I in, in the sign language class. But while I was a student, I gained confidence because Jose was able to give me confidence. In the future, when people would ask me, Oh my gosh, who's your teacher? Who, who, who taught you sign language? I'm proud to say it was Jose. <laughs> so my guardian angel, thank you so much. <laughs> but beautiful story so vanessa why because she would shrug her shoulders and then in the deaf culture you know we tell it like, like it is and if we see something that's how you get your sign name so jose gave her the sign name because of her shrugging her tendency to shrug her shoulders
Do you mind coming here, please? I know that um, I want to just give her opportunity because she made beautiful handmade art. I know she doesn't want to speak about it, but I just wanted to show that this is the face of Jose Granda. as a tribute to him. Maria, if you don't mind coming up, we would like to give it to you as a gift in honor of Jose. And it was hand crafted. Um. And if there's a paper that we can wrap it because it's so precious, she's going to bring a, a tissue paper to wrap it. And next, we will have Nancy Rourke, which we are so appreciative that she was able to fly in. It's snowing where she's from, so I'm so grateful that she was able to come. And I know that she just loves coming to Miami. But thank you for being here. I wanted to talk about my, the video that I presented. Yesterday, I did go to Wynwood to check the very spot where we, Jose and I, have spray painted. And it has badly faded, but it is still there. So I hope to go back. I didn't have time today, but I will go back before I leave to fix it, to respray and clean it up and leave it as a memory, as well as flowers for his memory. I know that Jose really, really loved his art. And maybe someday his, heart, his art will go to the NTID. As a conservation of his art go to the archive and it will go to the archive there so i really hope that does happen and that we just treasure today watching the video of all his art and if you see around some of his art it's really impressive his work his artistic skill and as he was a self-taught artist i mean there's no perfection in art it is his style that you can see in his art and as his signature his seal it's like a tattoo right he had a tattoo actually of it as well and this painting in the center that I painted and it's called Stone Deaf. He gave me that title because of his pride on in deafness, his pride in deaf culture. So it, signing the deaf with all fingers to emphasize the culture of the deaf. And a lot of his pictures, I would say, you know what, go ahead and pick anything you want. But the most important thing to show were the eyes. So actually he told me, you can choose whatever you want in your, in, in your painting of me. But I did, I did want to emphasize on his eyes. And I added, I said, I asked him, is it okay if I add more to the sign deaf, if I add more details in the hands? And he said it was okay. To me, the eyes are the most important part. And he said he wanted a really smooth and shiny head. And he said, oh, why is my head so shiny? And then the yellow, blue, and red are my colors, it's, which represents, yellow represents the power of looking to the future. Um, blue represents oppression fighting and fighting against it. Thank you. 
And for all, and for now, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy Rourke, so much. And thank you for explaining the beautiful art piece that you had of, of um, Jose Granda, but also thank you for explaining the symbol of the hand that is all the senses except for the hearing. So it shows deafness. And now I would like to bring, um, ask Rikohi Smith to come up, who came all the way from Orlando. Rico. Hello. My name is Rico. My name sign is this. Why? Jose gave it to me. He said, I noticed that when you're nervous or hot or you're sweating, you're always pulling at your shirt. So if you see me pulling at my shirt today, you know why. Um, I can do this. Don't mind. I got you, sorry for me. I got a voice. Thank you. Um, I first met Jose about 2005, 2005, 2006. Um, we chatted online and he was like, you know, I'm coming to Orlando and why don't you come meet me? I'm going to be out there with my friends. And so I was like, okay, come meet him out. And I get to the bar and there's all these deaf guys sitting in a circle, just chatting away, chatting away. I was like, they're deaf. And back then I didn't know any sign language. So I knew how to finger spell. And I learned, I learned that um, when I was in elementary school. And so I said, I'm gonna be bold, I'm gonna be brave. And I approached them and I was like, I'll do this part. It's like, hi, my name is R I S D. They're laughing. Why? Because four or five of them were there at the bar with my friends there. And I thought, I thought I'll be rejected. Some silly hearing person coming up to me and trying to use his elementary school sign language but that's not what happened. I was accepted. Now I have these really great friends that are here today to help us celebrate Jose's life. Jose and I became fast friends. I went to visit him in Fort Lauderdale. One time we went out to dinner and we were writing stuff back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I was like, no. That's a lousy way to communicate. If you and I are gonna become friends, I need to learn your language. So he started to teach me. Two weeks later, he was visiting me in Orlando and I had a surprise for him. I bought a book with a DVD inside and I started practicing and learning. So when I saw him again, I approached him and I said, what's up, bitch? <laughs> and he laughed, laughed, laughed. And you know what he did next? He corrected me. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> he said, if you're going to use bad words, you need to do it the right way. Um, Jose is one of my best friends.
And he shared his language with me. He shared his culture with me. He shared his friends with me. And he shared his life with me. And I always appreciate him for that. Funny story. I'm just going to try to keep this light. Um, so I'm partially the reason to blame why he found an interest in a smartphone and why he liked to send messages all the time. That's partially my fault. Many years ago, when a smartphone started to come out, I said to Jose, you need a smartphone. Refused. You need it. Refused. You need it. Okay. I said to him, what if you break down at two o'clock in the morning? What are you going to do? And this is exactly what he did. <laughs> um, Jose was the first person to always send me um, Christmas cards. And when he would travel, I always get postcards and I would send them to him. Um, I work for an airline, JetBlue, and there was a competition I submitted for a name of a plane. It's located on the very front of the aircraft. And I had an idea and I submitted it and I won. And the idea was JetBlue loves you on the side of the aircraft, written with ASL handshapes. And I dedicated it to Jose. That was four years ago. And I'd only seen pictures of this plane. And I decided I was going to take a trip for my birthday, which was December 10. On my birthday, I was traveling from Lima. And guess what? I was traveling on a plane that I named in honor of Jose. And I was boarding the airplane at around 12.30 on December 11th. I don't know what that means, but it was around the time that Jose passed. And I was finally on the plane that I dedicated to him. Again, I don't know what that means but I think he had something to do with that. So I was trying not to keep this all sad and everything, but um, to the family, thank you for make, helping make Jose who he is. And I will miss him and I love him and I'll never forget him. Jose? I love you, my friend. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much, Rico. I mean, this end of the presentation, I didn't know who it was, but now I know who you are. I mean, wow, such a beautiful, heartwarming story. Thank you for coming and winning that competition and dedication. Wow, so touching. And finally, the final, last presenter, before we leave, don't leave yet, the last one will be Maria Monty. Monty. Okay. Jose's sister. Please do, don't do take the flamingos. Leave them on the tables, please, for the family first and the volunteers and some of the staff and the president of the college. So please be respectful of that. If there are any in, in the end left, then you can have those. But first, please respect my wishes on that. And as well as the QR code, make sure you get it, that. And the, if you want to order T-shirts, you know, go ahead and sign up. Today's the last day. But right now, it's 
cold up north, so it's a bit of a delay. So we will be able to contact you when they come in via Cash App or whoever. And Nancy Rourke will be also doing the accepting payments with that. She's the one that did the artwork for the T-shirt. And I've already ordered mine, but it hasn't come in yet. So anyway, next will be Maria Monty. Please come up. Hello, I uh, I had this bullet points to talk about. I think I'm just gonna <laughs> and not speak from these papers. Um, I want to thank Miami Dade, obviously, for doing this beautiful uh, celebration of life for my brother. Oops. And, and everybody that organized this. I am overwhelmed. I keep saying this and it, I, it, I, I can't even get the words out. I am so overwhelmed and I will not step, stop saying it of all the love that has poured for my brother. My brother was my brother. It's like I tell people, he was a regular guy to me. You know, didn't think much of it. Um, but you all have enlightened me and had made me see things in a different way completely of who he was and the impact that he made to so, so many people. I almost feel like saying he was a hero, you know, based on all the stories and all the impact and, and the advocacy for the deaf and everything that he did. Um, like you all have said, he was, he was a proud Cuban, he was a proud deaf, and he was proud gay. No apologies for any of that. He was who he was, whether you liked it or not. And God bless him for that, that he was who he was, and he accepted it, and you either loved him that way, or you didn't. He didn't care. But he loved so many people. He wasn't prejudiced. He didn't, he didn't see people differently. He loved everybody. I mean, I, I just don't know how to explain it. He just loved everybody. And he had a big heart for everyone. Didn't matter what nationality, what color, what from what country you were, it didn't matter. He just loved people. And you've all said that, you know, he. He just had a big heart and he was happy all the time. He was funny. He was goofy to me. I always say goofy instead of funny because he would do these crazy things and send me crazy memes at two o'clock in the morning. Thank you, Rico, <laughs> for that. <laughs> at all times of the morning, uh, my phone would ding and I would look, it was him sending me some crazy, funny stuff. But that's who he was. And Eddie said it, he was fearless. He was independent. As a little girl, I'm 10 years younger than him. And I always saw that he was so independent. How could someone with a disability be so independent and just be normal like any of us, you know, who speak um, and hear? So he had no boundaries, none whatsoever. He traveled. We talked about this. He traveled around the world, loved to meet new people. I do know for a fact that every country he visited, whether it was Italy, France, Amsterdam, it didn't matter what country he was at. He Cuba, he wanted to go to Cuba as well to meet, um, to, to see where he was born. He always went to visit the deaf school in that area. That was his main focus. He wanted to see the place, learn the culture, but he wanted to go to the deaf school of that specific country. And that speaks to me just 
how how in love he was with his culture, with the deaf culture. And I am so proud of that. Uh, again, I had a list of things that I was going to go through. I'm not going to go through any of that because I think you all have said it better than me. Uh, all the stories, all the beautiful stories, uh, just moving stories from every single one of you. Um, I just couldn't stop crying, to be honest with you. And it fills my heart to know that he was so loved. So I am not going to be sad anymore, even though I will miss. Sorry, I will miss. <laughs> the times that I will not have with him anymore. I will miss that. But I'm going to rejoice in the legacy that he's left behind. And what I also want to do, obviously, I thank Miami-Dade also for this scholarship, for the ASL scholarship, the foundation. I think that is huge. And I love that Miami-Dade decided to do something like that. So I encourage everybody, uh, if you can, to make a donation to that. And I would love, I am not a fluent um, ASL speaker, but I can I can talk to any, any deaf person. I would probably um, sign every single word or most of them, but I can communicate, obviously, as I did with my brother. But I would be more than honored to be part of his legacy and help in any way that I can to the deaf culture, to, to Miami-Dade, um, just to anything that I can be of help to continue his legacy and to expand the awareness and the advocacy to, to the deaf culture. So, I don't know all of you and your functions, but if there's anything that I can help in any way, please reach out to me because um, I would love to continue that for my brother. Thank you all. Thank you, Maria. And I want to thank all of you who have come and attended driving and all of you who are watching online on YouTube. I really appreciate your love and support. And we want to go ahead and thank and the individuals who have supported this program and making it possible. Maria Monti, Natalie Granda, the family of Jose Granda, John Paul, JP here, of course, Carolina, myself, Annette Valido, Vanessa Morero, Reynaldo, Ray Vega, in the back, Daniel Hines. Thank you so very much, Daniel. Like he's doing video and stuff like that. So thank you. <laughs> Making sure Errol Tech, Tech works. Neil Tug, Deborah, Nancy Rourke, mm -hmm. Debbie Gibson from Signs of Excellence, SOE. The Sign Language Interpreting Program here at Miami-Dade North Campus. President of the Miami-Dade College North Campus, uh, Dr. Vermin Vasquez. Dr. Venezuela, Dean of Faculty. Ferdinando Lopez, the chairperson of English and Communications, and also access for providing the interpreters. And Daniela. 
Crystal. Crystal. Daniela, Crystal, for putting all this together and helping us out, doing the organizing and planning. And Alfredo, Sarmiento, and Jose Gondar. Gondar for the tech support, Campus CIO. North Campus CIO. CIO. And now we'll go ahead and do the last event, which is providing a plaque to the family and to the ASL lab. We have a very sp special group of students and staff here at Miami Dade College in the department, the whole thing, the mentorship, everything. And we have an award, a plaque for you. If, uh, are you ready? Okay, Maria, if you would please come to the stage as well as your brother, Eduardo. It reads here, my, my Dade College Interpreting Program, Jose honors Jose in appreciation for the many years of dedicated service, devotion to the community, a proud deaf, so many different communities, the deaf interpreter communities. He's a proud deaf gay Cuban man with it larger than life. Here's a professor, he was a mentor, presenter, artist, and friend. And there's one more plaque as well. And we made a copy of it to be placed here in the Miami Dade College ASL lab. So everyone who comes in can look at it and remember Professor Granda. I would like to, Mr. Lopez or Dr. Vasquez or whomever, come and so we can present it to you and it can be placed in the ASL lab so people can remember Jose from here on out. And they are identical plaques. that the family would please come to the front for a photograph if you would all please on the front on the floor
Now the program is finished. We've come to a close, drawing the curtains. Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. And make sure you sign the guest book, the guest poster, whichever is out there, and t-shirts and everything. Thank you so much. I love you all. I appreciate it. Please remember to leave the things on the table. Thank you.